the newer drugs are coming out, and I think that's a um, different class of drugs. Um, the therapies that are being utilized, axitinib, which seems to be a very similar to sinitinib, made by the same company, seems to be a much more potent medication. It's going to get its FDA approval in second-line therapy, and already they have ongoing first-line therapy trials for it. Again, if you can take what we already have and make that better, that's exactly what we're trying to do with this class of medication. Um, there still is the hope of using these tar different target therapies in combination and utilizing them with least amount of toxicities and most benefit that can have benefit with patients long term rather than short term. The medications we have definitely have responses, stability of disease, causes durable therapies, uh, durable responses in patients in the sense that people can expect to have six to eight months of no progression or slight regression of the disease prior to progression. Um, but the toxicity seems to be an issue with a lot of these medications. If one can believes that they are dealing with a marathon or a race and not just a short distance race, um, one has to really pace themselves to have effective therapy with good tolerability for a durable period of time. When one can actually have a medication that can do that, patients can actually live their life with cancer without suffering from their disease or from the therapies. And that's really the goal for these therapies, is to make patients live a full life, or as best as life as possible, without progression and without, the to and without the toxicities of the therapy. Unfortunately, the medications we have now, especially when you do them in combination, the toxicity seems to be rampant. And that seems to be limiting the, to the tolerability of the patient, and therefore unable to obtaining um, good duration of responses, because the medications have to be altered or discontinued.